guys, welcome back to Check Your Leader TV. Today we're gonna to continue with our GDA2 boot camp. We're up to part four. Just to reiterate, I am not the authority on these rules, um, but uh, I have been sending a lot of questions to the authors. Uh, in particular, Dave Brown has been kind enough to respond to any questions I have uh, on things that I'm not too sure of. So I think I've got things pretty right. That said, nothing here is gospel. Uh, make sure you read your rules um, and uh, if you have doubts, uh, go to the, the, the various forums and get clarification there. Uh, that said, I think we're on pretty solid ground. Um, as I've stated in the previous videos, we're playing a core level game here, but with a slight twist. Um, instead of having uh, a core of at least two divisions, what I've done is I'm playing essentially with a single division on each side. Each division, however, is very, very large. Uh, and what I've done is I've included the the, the, the core level game aspects into the rules. The only thing that I, from the core level game that I'm not doing is when it comes to determining initiative, um, I'm just I'm doing the initiative roles uh, as if it was just a single division. But other than that, it's, uh, it's still uh, all, the, all the core level um, rule mechanisms uh, are still uh, solid and uh, still applicable. So, uh, with that said, Let's get straight into it. In this video, uh, we should uh, be able to wrap up the series. Uh, we're going to, we've already seen a, a charge in combat resolution. We've covered firing and movement. Um, in this video, we're going to see uh, a, an assault into a BUA and how that is conducted and how it differs from the normal charge procedure. So let's get on with it. Let's continue our Battle of Crayon 1814. So firstly, before we go on though, let me uh, take the opportunity to thank Battlefield Accessories for sponsoring these videos. Uh, in this particular episode, I'd like to draw your attention to their Table Ready Terrain. This stuff is fantastic. It's um, pre-printed uh, in a way that uh, you don't have to paint it. So uh, all you have to do is, uh, it comes flat packed, you pop it out, bit of PVA glue, you put it together. Not only is it painted on the outside, but it's also painted on the inside, okay? So it, it, it really is, it's fantastic terrain. Um, you know, I don't know, about, I don't know about, about you, but I, uh, I, I love MDF terrain, but I hate painting it. Um, uh, Any time I spend working on terrain, I'm not painting miniatures, and those little suckers don't paint themselves. So a great time saver, excellent value for money. Um, and so, yeah, check out Battlefield Accessories and thanks again for sponsoring um, these videos. And stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't already picked up the promo code from the previous videos, uh, hang around uh, and later on in this video, I'll give you the promo code so you can get yourselves some fantastic uh, General de Arme deployment markers uh, if you uh, happen to buy uh, some of their very swank uh, General de Arme 2 uh, game markers. Uh, also, they're going to be at Salute uh, for, the, for our friends in the UK or people who are uh, thinking about visiting the UK in April and going to Salute. Uh, Battlefield's accessories will be there. If you want some stuff brought over from Australia and save uh, to save yourself on postage, um, when you place an order with Battlefield accessories, uh, put in the comment uh, uh, Salute with a capital S, 51 Pickup with a capital P, all one word, salute, 51 pickup, uh, and Mike will be able to bring, um, hopefully be able to bring over uh, your order for you rather than you having to pay postage. Uh, they do a flat rate postage internationally anyway, so it's pretty good, uh, pretty good value, even if you buy directly from Australia. But if you can save yourself a, a few bob uh, by having the stuff brought to the UK uh, to, directly to salute, uh, then why not take advantage of that? All right, so with that said, um, let's get back into the game. Oh, and just bear in mind with that that salute pickup, um, you know, he can only take so much with him. So it's a case of, uh, you know, get in, get in early if you want to have your, um, your purchases from Battlefield Accessories uh, hand-delivered, safe hand to you at salute. Right, now let's get back into the game. So now we're at the beginning of turn four, uh, and we start with Corps Commander's dice rolls. So the French Corps first. Okay, 
Okay, they have available the blue and the white. Uh, the blue one is uh, Ride the Line, and the white is Core HQ. Um, so that's what's available to them for this turn. Now remembering uh, the French have a Core Adjutant, but again, the Core Adjutant can only re-roll die scores of one. So that's the worst possible result, getting uh, two. So we can't re-roll either of those. Now, uh, Luca is back uh, after riding the line. So now they will have all four dice as well. So the uh, Allied Core dice. Okay, they missed out on the black, but they do have uh, the red, white, and blue. So they can use any of them. We're all for ABC availability. The French will be the red dice and the allies will be the black. Okay, so the French have a double six. So that's gonna grant them one. Uh, they're successful. This one's not, but the double six will give them another one. So they've got all six aide de camps. Um, as for the unfortunate allies, they only have three. Now, turn four sees uh, this French brigade under Cap uh, Carpentier arrive. Consists of one line battalion and two reservists. The line battalion being the one with the tricolour, and the uh, two reserve, reserve battalions um, having the fanions. So, uh, yeah, three battalions are all up, standard size, and a skirmish screen of four. Their ADC, however, doesn't arrive, um, it can't be diced for because the brigade is not yet on table. Uh, so uh, the ADC doesn't uh, arrive uh, to be diced for until uh, the subsequent turn. So of the core orders, um, uh, the French are going to use core order and option number three, which is sappers. So they're going to attach sappers to a battalion that will be fighting in a built up area. So quite obviously the intention is that the French will launch uh, this battalion here into this built up area and attempt to take it. And by adding sappers to that battalion, they will uh, gain additional casualty dice uh, when, they, when they finally assault. Uh, assuming, of course, they actually get in. Uh, as for the Allies, the core order they're going to use, they're going to use a uh, the head, uh, sorry the core ADC. So what that will do is they'll add one additional ADC to those available uh, for the divisions. So instead of having just three, they will now have four aide de camps. Uh, so what we're going to go on with now is allocation of ADCs. Okay, so the tactical situation from the perspective of the French, um, they've basically tried to place pressure on the uh, allies on the French left um, to keep their eyes over there and now they're going to launch an assault uh, over here. They're going to use one of their CNC commands uh, and in this case they're going to use post of honor. So the divisional commander has come over, so Ney and Victor, they've come over and they're joining this brigade here. Using post of honor they're basically going to attach themselves to this brigade and uh, go in with this battalion, this young guard battalion, and try to assault and clear out that, uh, that built up area and capture at least half of the garrison. Now to use that CNC command will cost two ADCs. The only CNC command that costs you no ADCs is chief of staff. Um, every, all the other ones are, are, uh, cost two ADCs. So there's two ADCs uh, used um, and they're gonna be uh, doing the uh, the chief of uh, the uh, post of honor thing. That leaves the French with four ADCs left. Uh, let's allocate those guys now. So the first ADC tasking is going to be to allocate General Nan Suti to these eclairs, uh, because those Prussian, uh, sorry, those uh, Hungarian hussars are looking rather menacing. So he's gonna to wanna to be Johnny on the spot and he's going to join the eclairs uh, with glory. Being a bold general, he'll, uh, automatically get his inherent re-roll as long as he uses either one or no ADC tasking. So one will still uh, allow him to have a re-roll if necessary. That leaves three ADCs left to utilize. We're gonna give one to uh, this bold uh, brigade commander 
uh, skirmish tasking here. Um, we're going to give a ADC uh, brigade attachment to this brigade to give it a reroll, and we're going to give this brigade over here a reroll. So essentially, every brigade will have at least a reroll. Um, what about this on this brigade that's coming on table? Well, it won't arrive on table until the reserve movement phase. Therefore, it's not actually on table, and therefore I cannot allocate uh, ADCs um, taskings to a brigade that has a yet yet to arrive on table. Um, because they're coming on due to a core commander's um, order, they automatically they just they they essentially as if it was a scenario they just march onto the table um, at their uh, designated arrival time. So these guys are going to come onto the table. They'll just move on. Um, depending on the, the formation they're in, the columns will move on nine inches. The skirmish screen will move on twelve inches, and that's that. So. That's all the French ADC taskings taken care of. Let's now have a look at the Allies. As for the Allies, well, they're, no, they're no fools. They're going to use Glory uh, tasking here uh, with this bold uh, brigade commander, and he will uh, uh, attach himself to this battalion in this garrison here. Uh, so he'll have Glory. So trying to help these chaps out. Um, that's one... The other tasking is simply a brigade attachment so that these guys don't go hesitant. They've had to give uh, another brigade attachment to this faltering brigade, uh, just as a matter of course. And their final one is they've given a brigade attachment of, sorry, uh, the brigade uh, ADC task of glory to the, the Hazars. Uh, the Hazars are going to uh, charge these uh, guys over here. So what we do now is we roll for the individual brigades to see which ones are hesitant and which ones aren't, which ones are following their orders, and then we'll, we'll do uh, brigade initiative, uh, sorry, uh, army uh, initiative. So we're gonna start with uh, this brigade here. We'll start with the, the allies. So they've got a glory tasking and he's bold. So he rolls two dice, takes the higher. Okay, he would have failed on that one, but he passes there, so they're good to go. This brigade here simply has a brigade attachment. Three, they're good. So far, so good. Now this brigade is faltering. So it rolls on the faltering brigade table. It's a completely different kettle of fish. Um, because they are recruits, um, yeah, they need to do, they need to do well. Um, that's not good. This brigade here, with the glory tasking, they pass, they're fine. Now we have uh, the Russian brigades. This one here, the cavalry brigade. Okay, they've gone hesitant. Uh, this brigade here, they're fine. And finally, these guys over here, they're fine. So, the Russians, uh, allies, have a hesitant brigade here. And so we're going to have to find out what the story is with these guys. Okay, that's a, a one on the faltering brigade table for recruit or reservist level uh, troops is a Savki Pet. Uh, Savki Pet dispersals all current retreaters and any unit within two casualties of a dispersal point and the brigade skirmish line disperse and then all the other brigade units they take four cds uh, and they retreat and if there was that uh, artillery in this brigade they go low on ammunition as well um, there are no other actions that are permitted and the brigade remains faltering so they're going to take the, these skirmishes are simply just going to um, Go find something better to do. These guys will retreat. That's 18 inches straight back. And they will take four CDs worth of casualties. We might as well roll for the casualties now and see how many they suffer. So uh, they'll take a casualty on a, uh, a four, five, or a six. One, two, three, three casualties. Yeah, they've, uh, uh, they could have got four, they've taken three. 
So they're not too happy about that. So now this brigade, after its retreat move, it's back here, it's unformed. Now I just wanna make it perfectly clear what this ADC tasking is. When a brigade is faltering, when you have a faltering brigade, when you uh, allocate, when you ascertain how many ADCs you have, one of those ADCs automatically has to be taken away and allocated to the uh, CNC. So he stays with the CNC. You allocate all your AD other ADCs. Oh. By having this ADC uh, placed next to him, it's just a reminder that actually there is an ADC that has been held back to um, uh, give this uh, brigade an opportunity just simply to roll. It's simply to roll on the faltering brigade table. If that ADC tasking, uh, well, that ADC wasn't available, then the brigade wouldn't, it wouldn't roll. It would simply go sad pet and that would be it. By having that ADC there, they're at least able to roll on the table. You could allocate another one, another ADC, and you could give it a re-roll if you wanted, but you could only allocate one brigade attachment to a faltering brigade. So, um, the reference is um, in this pop-up right here, and you can uh, read it for yourself how it works. Just bear in mind, an ADC, a minimum of one ADC has to be held back or allocated, if you wish, to that this, this brigade. Otherwise, it automatically goes sub Um So ideally, he should have been placed next to the uh, CNC, the divisional commander, but I like to place them next to the the um, the, uh, the the brigade concerned, just so I just as a reminder that he that they actually get to roll, uh, rather than just automatically going south Kipet. So let's start rolling for these French generals. The first one is Nun Soute. Okay, he would have failed on that one, but he uh, he's got that one. Well, so he's again, good to go. he's bold two dice. He's good to go. <laughs> they keep do uh, dodging bullets. This brigade here has a command re-roll, uh, a brigade att attachment, so. Okay, so he's rolled a one. He's rolled another one. So the Hazar, uh, the, um, the, the, the Dragoons have gone hesitant despite having an attachment. These guys here, they're fine. And these guys, we don't have to roll for them at all because they've got that. Now, as I've stated in the other videos and at the beginning of this one, um, yes, I am playing a, a core level game, but essentially what I'm doing is uh, uh, I'm playing a core level game, but with only a division per side. So I'm going to use the the uh, the method we use for a divisional level game to work, ascertain um, the uh, initiative, who has the initiative. So with that in mind, the uh, allies have one Fulton Brigade and one Hesitant Brigade, so that gives them two dice in addition to their normal two, so they'll be rolling four dice. The French, by contrast, they have one Hesitant Brigade, so they'll roll an additional one. So the French will be rolling uh, three dice, the uh, allies will be rolling four, both sides take the lower two. Okay, cat size for the... Uh, allies, uh, and for the uh, French, a two and a five. Now, it is worth pointing out, with that post of honour, uh, it also permits the uh, the side that's using post of honour to re-roll one of their two uh, initiative dice. So if, by chance, the allies had rolled particularly well, um, the French could re-roll this one. Um, so that's just another advantage that comes with Post of Honor that's worth remembering. But the French have the initiative again, uh, and so let's go straight into charge declarations. Now, I should add that Post of Honor re-roll for the initiative that only applies in divisional level games, not in core level games. So it wouldn't be applicable in our case anyway because we're playing at core level. Now, for the French on the left flank... Um, those hussars are actually just over 18 inches away. Um, you can pre-measure, um, but we didn't. <laughs> and, um, and it just turns out that um, they're actually not in charge range. 
so they're just agonizingly outside of 18 inches probably about by about one and a bit um, so both sides really have wasted ADC taskings here. Um, so that just leaves one charge declaration, uh, and that is with the French over here. So um, these guys are going to charge into this BUA. Uh, these chaps are going to attempt to storm uh, the built-up area. So with that in mind, um, uh, they will uh, they will react. Uh, the way attacks on BUAs work is somewhat different to what you would normally uh, expect. The way it works is um, the uh, unit that is charging simply moves to the three inch point, the troops that are defending simply fire, and then the, uh, the uh, uh, any hits or any resulting discipline tests uh, 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 take effect, and then they just move into combat. So the garrison uh, reacts uh, and they will fire five dice um, at the attacking uh, Frenchman. So we've moved these guys up to the three in, uh, within three inches. Uh, but actually, they're actually more they're closer than that, but it doesn't really matter. I know where they are. So what will happen is, in response, these guys will shoot at them with their five dice. But in addition, the garrison on this side can also fire. So that'll be another five dice. So. These guys here first, so they'll fire their uh, their their five dice, um, hitting on four plus, uh, and they've scored two hits, which equals one casualty. That's that so far, uh, and then these guys here now, their five dice coming out. Um, they've got a grand total of. Uh, three, uh, sorry, four hits, which is two casualties, which means one casualty will go on that brigade skirmish screen. That will remove a base, actually. Um, so they're down to two bases in that brigade skirmish screen. Um, and one hit here. So that takes them up to a grand total of um, three hits all up. Um, but because they have post of honour... Um, they recover one casualty. So in, a, in essence, they only have two hits. I've just noticed uh, under 11.3.4 firing with garrisons that they actually do have their own priority targeting. Um, so they do fire like skirmishes uh, and a garrison fires with five dice, four if recruits, um, but their priorities are, are slightly different. Uh, garrisons may uh, must fire at the nearest infantry target. So all those, all that fire actually goes on the charging uh, French uh, battalion. So I'm going to fix that up and uh, rest assured I'm going to add an, an additional casualty. But it hasn't triggered a, a discipline test. So it's, it, other than just adding another casualty, uh, there are no other consequences worth noting. Uh, and so now they simply go straight in to the BUA. There's no discipline tests to be taken. There was no skirmish tasking in play here, so rolling double sixes didn't uh, didn't uh, cause a discipline test. Um, instead of uh, giving the skirmish tasking, and, and uh, the brigade commander uh, decided that he would rather uh, be in the fight, uh, hence the glory. So what I like to do when there's so much going on like this, um, I've, uh, I've put down two white di dice to represent that they're going to have two combat dice, uh, two extra combat dice because of the sappers. Uh, they've got two combat dice because of glory, because um, uh, CNC, post of honor, will give you two uh, combat dice for glory. And then they're, they're five dice when they go in. So that's what they're going to start off with when they pile into this place. Uh, obviously, they'll take deductions when they get to the combat phase. Now, that's all the charge declarations taken care of. What we're gonna go on with now is um, movement. So French tactical movement, Allied tactical movement, French reserve movement, and then Russian reserve movement. So let's get straight into the movement phase. Okay, so uh, French movement phase. I've already done some of the movement just to save time. Um, 
the Empress of Greens have moved back to here and what you have seen is the uh, Eclairs and the Red Lancers have swapped positions. The Reds, the, uh, the Red Lancers, the Old Guard Lancers have moved to the left uh, because they want to take the lead if uh, charged by these uh, Hazars or if they decide to charge the Hazars. Um, you might think to yourself, geez, they, 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 they just changed places like that. Yeah, um, cavalry in general, the army is quite maneuverable as it should be. You've got to remember these cavalry regiments um, are not like big blocks of cavalry. They're um, independent squadrons in a, in a regimental formation. Um, they are quite maneuverable. And in general, the army, you can freely interpenetrate um, as a general rule. Um, I'll check the rules on interpenetration or what we call, uh, have a look at the rules on passage lines. You'll see that as long as you start and finish outside nine inches of the enemy, you can freely interpenetrate. Uh, yeah, certain troops can freely interpenetrate. So that's what the this cavalry brigade has done. Uh, this brigade here, uh, the brigade skirmish line has moved off to the left and the veteran young guard battalion here has changed into skirmish order and moved forward. Um, it's worth noting um, that um, only veteran or elite light infantry can change into skirmish order and operate in open terrain. Um, all other uh, light infantry can change into skirmish order, but they will only do so in woods or vineyard, uh, woods or orchards, uh, vineyards as well, I guess, uh, woods and orchards. So, um, but only veteran or above light infantry can be in skirmish order uh, in open terrain, as these veterans have done here. Now, if we have a look at uh, of movement on the French right, um, this um, uh, line battalion of young guard, they're, they're rated as line, they've changed into skirmish order as well, but they've moved into the woods. So they've changed from column formation into skirmish order and moved into the woods. So they're in skirmish order there. Their brigade skirmish order, uh, brig brigade skirmish line has withdrawn uh, deeper into the woods where they're perfectly safe. The reason for this is that a brigade skirmish line um, reduced the two bases. Um, if they go hesitant, uh, they automatically withdraw uh, anyway. It doesn't count it as, as a dispersal, but they withdraw. However, if a brigade skirmish line um, is uh, destroyed by enemy action, um, so they're out there skirmishing away, they're at two bases, they take three hits and now they're one, that, that disperses the brigade skirmish line, and that counts, that counts as a faltering, uh, sorry, as a dispersed unit and will cause the brigade to falter. So be careful with your brigade skirmish line. I just realised I've made a slight mistake here, not a slight mistake, a big mistake. Um, these guys are classed as line, not veteran. I, I see a young guard flag, I automatically think they're veterans. Uh, anyway, obvious mistake is they changed formation and then they moved into the woods. Now, here's the thing. Only veteran and elite units can change formation and move. So they would either have to um, change formation in skirmish order and then stay where they were or move in here in column formation, which would reduce their movement to half or they could move at full speed in column and take a casualty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these guys into column formation and I'll put a casualty on them instead. Now, um, it won't. other than that, it won't make any uh, change to the game. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'll sort that out now. Okay, sorted. The only movement left we have to do now for the French is we're going to advance... Uh, this column over here towards that skirmish line uh, to by, try to go around the side of this garrison here. Note that when these uh, when the column moves, the enemy skirmish line will automatically move back to maintain three inches uh, distance from it. That movement is a bonus movement for that skirmish line. So, all we simply do is we measure that this unit is going to advance nine inches because it is a French column. So nine inches will get it to this point here. And the brigade skirmish line simply gives ground before it, as long as they maintain three inches um, uh, distance from the enemy, which places them essentially there.
Now, obviously, these are moving up. They, they don't, they, they're not fearful of any fire coming out of this garrison because this garrison is busy fighting for its life. It can't fire uh, in the firing phase because it fired in the charge phase. So when it, if a unit fires, uh, provides defensive fire or fire in reaction to an enemy charge, that's its firing done. It's fired out of sequence. It can't then fire again in the, the, the firing phase. Um, and this brigade skirmish line will move up in support. And this battery on the hill, they had limbered up last turn and now they're going to move off. So now we look at the Allied movement. The other thing that really has happened uh, as far as the Allies concerned, is the Hazars over here. They've moved up uh, a little bit closer to make sure that they're in charge range of the French cavalry. Um, and in the centre, um, the uh, Prussian battalion has simply sidestepped uh, uh, half movement across uh, behind these guns. They're trying to move across to uh, bring some fire to bear on this skirmish line over here. And the uh, Prussian uh, column has advanced slightly uh, to threaten um, these, uh, these French I should here. note, uh, by sidestepping across, they've also moved up into support range for that battery because uh, uh, if that battery gets charged, they're gonna want some infantry support. Uh, the Prussian Schutzen that was here, they've retired they're still within range of these guys here, but they're out of range of these fellas. One of the advantages of moving second is you get to see what the other, what the opponent does and can re react to it. Um, they gave ground when this column came forward, obviously. That was the bonus move. These skirmishers came up to be within range, but didn't come up far enough. Uh, these guys have been able to fall back so that they're now in a situation where they can engage the column uh, who is advanced without a essentially without skirmish support. So these skirmishers will be free to shoot at them um, completely unmolested uh, without having to engage uh, anybody else. So that's that's the tactical movement done. The only reserve movement that is left is to bring on uh, these guys here. So the brigade enters the table, they've come on in the center sector uh, and brigade skirmish line has come forward 12 inches and the columns nine inches, two up, one back. Uh, that ends all the reserve uh, movement. The uh, Prussians don't have any. Uh, the Russians don't have any. The Allies don't have any. So now we're going to move on to shooting. So we'll start off with the skirmishes as we traditionally do. Uh, this brigade skirmish line over here, there, uh, it's a brigade skirmish line, so that's one dice. And there's three bases. That gives us four. The skirmish tasking is not in play for them. The brigade commander has allocated that skirmish tasking to this light infantry battalion here. So, so uh, four dice, they're going to be pinging away at that battery. And they've got three hits, which equates to one casualty. Now the one hit, hit on the battery will go on the battery and not on these skirmishers because even though they are in arc and it is uh, 12 inches from this point here to this point there, there the rest of the bases were over 12 inches away. So now we have the Light Infantry Battalion. Now, Light Infantry Battalions, or, or any battalion in skirmish order, it's five dice. They have the skirmish tasking, so that's six. They're going to be firing, uh, sorry, that's seven. Geez, me good at math. Um, so five plus two is seven. They're going to fire at the battery, but the Schutzen or the Jaeger are within arc, so the first casualty will go on them. So it's uh, five for the battalion, two for the skirmish tasking, a grand total of seven dice. And that has got to be the worst shot I've ever seen. Not a single hit, let alone casualty. So that's uh, that's atrocious. Those young guardsmen obviously uh, were given sawdust rather than uh, black powder. So that's the shooting. Um, uh, taken care of here. I'll put that casualty on that back. So now we do the um, the Allied skirmishes. We'll start off with the the Schutzen over here. 
they're going to shoot at this light infantry battalion. Um, so a, a brigade skirmish line, one di dice, three bases. Uh, that gives us a grand total of four. So four dice hitting on four plus. And they've got three hits, which equals one casualty. Now, when you're shooting at a light infantry battalion in skirmish order, you don't count one, two, three base off, one, two, three base off. It's simply just tracking casualties. So they have one casualty on them. Okay, that just leaves the Schutzen on the other side of the BUA. So now it's got, we've got these guys shooting at them. Um, they're a brigade skirmish line. There's one, two, three, four bases. And they have rifles. So that's another one. So that gives them a grand total of six dice. They'll be hitting on, uh, as usual, four plus, because they're shooting at these guys here. They don't have to worry about these guys because uh, they're closer and they're out of range. Okay, a six and a four, and then the rest are all twos, literally four twos. One hit, so there's one hit on these guys here. So that takes them up to two casualties. Uh, no garrison fire coming out of here because they've all fired in the charge phase and no garrison fire coming out of the, the other garrison uh, because there's no one to shoot at. So we move on to artillery fire. French go first. This battery here is going to fire at that um, at that uh, Prussian battery. Um, we'll talk quickly about shooting priorities or target priorities. So just on uh, artillery priority targets, um, the first target always has to be if they're being charged, but if they're a canister or effective or canister or effective range, the battery may choose any target. At long range or long and elevated range, a battery that takes casualties from enemy artillery fire in the current turn must return that fire on the battery if it is an eligible target. Otherwise, the nearest close order unit or deployed battery must be must be targeted. Um, it's also, also worth noting that batteries on assault fire taskings, they ignore the priority target rules, all of them, and they may fire at any target they choose. So this battery here, it's nothing's at close range, so it can choose who it wants to shoot at, and it's going to fire at the, the, uh, the enemy battery. So it's firing at effective range. Uh, there's no pluses, there's no minuses. Actually, I will I'll just check to see if it is at long range. Actually, it's long range, so it's uh, inferior fire. Just means that when it rolls, it rolls on the inferior fire, fire table. Um, there is a gap between, there is a, a clear line of sight that it can shoot through. So no problems there. And it's rolled a nine. Okay, so the inferior battery table we are rolling a nine and um, it's one. So just one hit on that battery yonder. Uh, and rest assured, I did dice for the bounce through from that French artillery fire going through that large Prussian battery into the battalion that is now within three inches to the rear. But unfortunately for the French gunners, that did not result in any casualties. Okay, so now that leaves us with uh, the Prussian battery, uh, the, the Allies shooting now. Um, we'll start off with the ones that have just taken a bit of a touch-up. So this battery here is going to fire at this light infantry battalion in skirmish order. It's at, uh, it's at close range now. So um, it's, it's a large battery uh, and it's um, uh, a firing at close range. So that'll give it an extra casualty dice. Um, it's going to be firing canister, so that gives it another two dice. Um, but it is uh, worn, so it's got six more casualties. So that's going to bring it down to um, uh, inferior fire, and it's firing at skirmishes, so it takes it down again. So it's going to be firing just one weak uh a single CD, so this will be the battery CD here, uh, but it does have these three casualty dice. 
So four CDs basically is what it'll be firing at those skirmishes. Okay, so it's important to take note of which dice represents the actual battery fire and which are the, uh, the casualty dice. We use the red dice to represent the battery fire because if we roll a one, um, well, that's, that's not good. So hitting on four pluses, and it has rolled a one. It's rolled three ones. It's inflicted one hit. Okay. Now what that one means is that battery will sustain a fatigue casualty. So it's given out a casualty, but it's taken one itself. So it's now up to nine casualties. This battery is in a pretty bad way and will probably be uh, considering uh, an emergency withdrawal um, at this rate. Okay, so uh, that's that battery fire done. One more battery to go, which is the Russian artillery. Now, although it did not apply in this case because those French columns were not within three inches of that French light infantry in skirmish order, uh, canister fire does have bounce through. So uh, canister, when it was fired, often there would be um, round shot with it as well, but also grape itself has qu quite a good penetrative uh, characteristics. So do not forget, uh, bounce through fire is not just through from round shot. In general to RMA2, canister also gives you bounce through. So if you have, if you're firing canister at a target and behind that target within the support range, three inches, you will get bounce through into them as well. But in this particular case, because those French columns were not within three inches of that French light infantry battalion in skirmish, skirmish order, no bounce through. So what we have now is this Russian large 12 pounder battery. It's gonna fire at the, uh, the Dutch Lancers. Uh, the old guy cavalry. Um, it's a large battery, so it, uh, but not at canister range. So, but it is firing at uh, troops in column formation, so that it'll get one casualty dice there. Okay, so it's a standard battery firing. It's rolled seven. Uh, and, but missed on the casualty dice. So seven on a standard battery, I'm pretty sure that's going to be uh, one, one casualty. Okay, so that's all the firing done because there's no volley fire at this stage. Now we go to the close combat or combat phase of the rules. Um, and what we have here is we've got these young guys, young, young guards storming into this village, both both are classed as line. Um, so let's go through it. They start off with a pool of five dice. So they've got their five dice. They've got two because they have post of honor glory. And then they have two because they have the uh, core order of uh, sappers because uh, they've got sappers attached as they go in. So that gives them a grand total of nine dice. The Prussians uh, defending the village, they have five, but they also have glory. So that takes them up to six. Now, because these guys are attacking a BUA, okay, so attacking a village in the first round, they lose one of their uh, combat dice. So now they're down to eight. So it's eight dice versus six. We'll roll for the we'll roll for the Prussians first because hey, they're right here. So hitting on four plus. Okay, they've got one, two, three. That's a completely standard result, as you would expect. Um, so they've inflicted three hits. Eight dice coming in at them now. One, two, three, four, five. They've inflicted five hits. So that's a difference of two. Uh, infantry versus infantry. Two, winner takes the ground and the loser retreats. So these young guardsmen with the aids of their sappers and inspired by their divisional commander have charged in, burst through and driven out these uh, Prussian defenders. Now, so they have a take the ground result, they have a retreat result. The retreat result basically means that the infantry have to retreat. The distance for an infantry retreat is 18 inches. They can't come out the back because the back of the BUA is on fire. So they could retreat out this way, or they could go out that way. If they go out that, they will, they'll be retreating through friends. If they come out this way, um, 
well, yes, they can come out through here. So, you know, these guys are to the side, but there's there's, uh, there's a gap through here. So they can retreat out through this way here. So um, what I'll do is I'll dice for it. Um, four, five, six, they go this way. Um, one, two, three, they go through uh, their friends. Okay, so they're going to go out that way. Kind of makes sense. So they'll go through this area here, retreating through their their friends on the right. Now, with a, with a retreat re result, they also take four CD casualties. So let's see how many casualties they take due to the retreat. Okay, another three. So uh, they're currently on seven. They're now up to 10 casualties. All right, so... Now, the other thing to consider also is their generals attached and they used a glory. Uh, so looking under the chapter or the, the paragraph risk to generals, we see that if a general is involved in a combat, he's using the glory tasking and suffers either a dispersal or a retreat result. They've got a retreat result. They roll a d6. If they roll a one, he's obviously uh, a, one of the casualties um, and the brigade will automatically falter. So, we'll roll uh, the die here. It's three. So he has survived. He's okay. But his unit is going to retreat out through the BUA. Um, and that's basically it. The take the ground, uh, the lead unit supports advance or wheel up to three uh, inches. Or they stand. Okay, so they're basically going to stand in that BUA. And um, as the name suggests take the ground. Here we have our defeated unit. It's retreated to this point here. So they retreat for 18 inches. Any unit they pass through, uh, when they go back initially, any units that they pass through within that first six inches, they unform. So these chaps here are now unformed. They go there, uh, they continue 18 inches or they can rally behind formed troops, enter these formed troops here. And so they're gonna rally behind them. They're marked with a retreat marker. They have six casualties. A standard unit will disperse at 12. So they're pretty close to that, but they're not there yet. So they're still they're still capable of rallying. So in the uh, next phase, if they um, if the brigade uh, is not hesitant, then they will um, rally to unformed. And then in the movement phase, um, they can then reform, uh, assuming they do nothing else. So that, this is where they've ended up. Um, as for the victor, the uh, victorious troops, they take their, they've taken this sector of the BUA uh, and they're now unformed themselves. Obviously, street fighting, it's going to take a while for them to sort themselves out. So they're currently unformed also. Bear in mind, the randomised retreat I've, I've just carried out, that's because I'm playing solo. Um, if I wasn't playing solo, the, the defender obviously can choose where he wishes to, out which side of the village he wishes to retreat out of, assuming he can't go out the back because, in, as in our case, it's on fire. If the, this village was not on fire due to art, artillery fire uh, from earlier in the game, then they would simply have come straight out of the back of this village out through here, uh, would not have passed through any friends whatsoever. So the, the fire being here has proved to be significant because it has prevented that unit from retreating out the back. It only had two options, either go left or right, and I dice for it. They went right and then uh, continued to go out the back. Um, so that's where, we're, uh, that's where we are with combat resolution. Just another point to note, if there had been multiple units uh, fighting in here, um, when you're victorious, um, you choose which of your units will garrison and the other one stays outside also unformed you just but, but you as the attacker can choose which one you want to put uh, to, to keep in um, the the uh, the village right so that ends turn four so at the turn at the end of turn four we see that the young guard have captured uh, half of this village over here um, and on the right, we've seen that the Guard Cavalry have managed to destroy essentially one brigade, um, but is now being uh, confronted by um, Austrian and Russian Cavalry and bata uh, infantry battalions in square. 
there's still a garrison back there to clear out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll play, I'm going to play through the next turn, but I'm just going to just beat along through until I get to something that I think might be advantageous for you to have a look at. And then we'll, um, we'll wrap it up from there. So it's the beginning of turn five and for core orders, the French roll, they got all their dice. Uh, and so they're going to use bl the this blue one right line, which basically means that if one of the uh, French uh, brigades goes hesitant, Napoleon himself can ride the line and remove that hesitant, uh, hesitant status from a brigade. They then rolled uh, for their ADCs. The French used their last of their CNC commands and they used Chief of Staff. Uh, this resulted in them having all their AD camps plus an extra two that gave them eight ADCs. The way they've used their ADCs is they've committed five to just this one brigade. A, a reroll, forwards, which costs two, glory, which costs one, and infantry assault, which costs another. So five. Um, over here, they've given two to this brigade, forwards, no reroll. They've given nothing to this brigade over here, nothing to this brigade here, and nothing to this brigade here. This brigade, they gave glory. As you can see, after all our dice rolling, this brigade is hesitant, this brigade went hesitant, but all the other brigades passed, all of them. Okay, the Prussians, they rolled for uh, their core orders. They got uh, all but the white, so they've used the, the uh, black dice, which is core reserve. So they're gonna call forward their off-table reserve, which is a consists of a Prussian uh, large Dragoon Regiment and a Horse Artillery Battery. We'll dice for them shortly. Um, their CNC tasking, they they also uh, use their final CNC, their one and only CNC task, and they also use Chief of Staff, which resulted in them getting um, uh, six AD camps. Uh, they, they used them as follows. They used uh, one over here to give glory to this brigade, and they passed. Um, they gave uh, uh, glory and an attachment, a, a re-roll to this brigade, and they pass. So there's three used up so far. They used another two over here where they gave glory and a re-roll, um, and they failed. So they went hesitant as well, same as the guard cavalry. So that's their two there. That left them with one aide-de-camp left. I'm going to use the scout uh, tasking. Uh, hoping that they can snatch the initiative away from the French. Okay, so now we have to roll to see on what turn do, does um, this off-table reserve arrive for the core? Okay, one. It's the worst possible result that it will arrive three turns from now. Um, as you have noticed in the little pop-up, they actually got seven aid de camps, but I forgot to take into account. Um, the, the seventh aid de camp had to be had to be given. Uh, to the CNC. Uh, when you have a faltering brigade, you have no choice in the matter. If you have an ADC available, you must allocate one to the uh, the commander in chief um, to to simulate the fact that there is command crisis because there's a faltering brigade. What I didn't do was I then didn't give a brigade attachment to this faltering brigade to give it a reroll on the safki pet uh, table. So. It, it'll just get, it'll get what it rolls, and it's as simple as that. And now we must roll on the faltering brigade table uh, for this unit here. Okay, they're, they're recruits, so it's a worst possible scenario. Two. So, Savki Pet uh, is the result. One or two is Savki Pet, three is wavering. Um, four, five, or six is pass. So they got a two, so they, for them, it's a retreat. So that basically destroys this brigade. The last of the uh, brigade will now retreat off the table, taking four CDs worth of casualties. But considering they're right on the edge of the table, uh, they're just gone. Now, Napoleon's going to ride the line, and what he's going to do is he's going to remove the hesitant from this brigade. They don't get the glory tasking. He simply removes the hesitants from them. So this brigade is no longer hesitant. Okay, so that means that the French 
will be rolling with one hesitant brigade. The allies will be rolling with one, two hesitant brigades. The French are the red, the Prussians and Russians are the black. They've got a five and the Prussians have also got a five. Now, the Prussians have the scout task, so they can re-roll uh, one of their dice. They'll re-roll this one. So the Prussians have gained the initiative. Now, the Prussians have no charge declarations at all. The French, they have, they have quite a few. They have uh, one with these guys with the forwards tasking. They've charged out of the woods. Now, half movement coming out of that woods is nine inches. That's four and a half, but they then rolled nine on 2d6. So that gave them 14 and a half inches, which gets them to easily to uh, assault um, the uh, built up area. So they went off in that direction. Um, over here, the infantry assault, it's a combined battalion assault, and they're gonna charge those guns. So they've got a movement rate of nine, and they're gonna get 2d6 plus six. Oh, sorry, 2d6 plus three, I think, I'll check. But nine plus seven is uh, 16. Six inches. There you go. So that's going to be 96 is 15, uh, 19, 22 inches, uh, which easily gets them there. Now the lead attack unit is this battalion here. So the brigade commander will attach to them. And these units, which are all in support range, will go with them. And they maintain that formation all the way as they go forward. So I'll just move them up and you can see where that gets. So up. after they've done their movement, they move three inches up. This is the lead battalion. As you can see, the supporting battalions just maintain the, their relative positions as they were at the start of the charge. Any unit that was in support range when this unit stepped off can go forward in support. If this unit had, for example, been four inches back from behind, uh, from the rear of this unit, then it wouldn't go forward in support. You have to be in support range, uh, or sorry, you have to be in support distance at the start of the charge to be able to support the charge. So these guys have gone forward and that's where they get to there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the, the reactions to the charge. Now quite obviously, uh, what's going to happen um, is this battery is going to fire. Um, this battalion, I'll have to check the distance. If it's within three inches, it can either provide a re-roll uh, in the charge or it can fire. Now, considering it's in column formation, firing would be a poor option. If it's within three inches, however, then uh, obviously that's what it will do. It will provide a re-roll for the battery. So that uh, Prussian column is within three inches, so it can provide a re-roll. Now, the skirmishers on the left, they will provide uh, supporting fire from units that are not involved directly in the charge. So they'll be able to shoot uh, into those columns coming forward. And the battery will fire just directly at the lead charge unit. Uh, share the joy across the two columns coming forward and bounce through. And they also get a su re-roll, support re-roll uh, from these Prussians in line uh, behind the them. The glory, well, you don't see this very often, but the the uh, brigade commander actually uh, anticipated that these guys might be charging. So he's attaching himself to the battery. All right, so they'll have glory there. Okay, so let's do the uh, charge responses. We'll go through this one first uh, before we uh, deal with the firing from over here. Okay, so in response, the battery uh, will fire. Okay, so the battery um, has one negative modifier against it. It's worn, so it'll be firing on the inferior battery table, but it's firing canister at close range. It's a large battery and the targets are columns. So it's gonna get four uh, CDs. The CDs will be black, and the battery itself will be rolling uh, on the, uh, using the red dice. Okay, so we're gonna roll the dice now for the battery. Okay, it's rolled a double one. It's done a fatigue casualty on itself, um, and only 
two hits. The other two are threes. That's, that is abysmal shooting. Okay, so two casualties all up. That means they have to be distributed evenly. So it'll be one on the, the battalion on the right, obviously one on the battalion on the left. There is bounce through fire on the battalion coming up behind. And they've rolled a one as well, so nothing there. So this worn battery has fired atrociously badly. But it gets worse for the Prussians because by rolling a double one, they also go low on ammo. Okay, now the skirmishers, they can fire. Uh, they will fire at um, the battalion, uh, the support battalion. Uh, three dice, obviously, for the bases, and one more for the brigade skirmish line. Uh, double one, four, and a three, so that is only one hit, which is no casualties. Okay, so that's really, really unfortunate for the Prussians there. Let's Looking first at the French lead unit. Uh, it's neither shaken nor disordered. No, none of those situations apply. So the French will have two dice, uh, and they will roll those and take uh, what they get there. The Prussian gunners, on the other hand, uh, they are suffering. Uh, they have six plus casualties, um, but that's all that's going against them. So they'll roll three dice and take the lower two. So the French first. We'll roll to see what they uh, score. Okay, they've rolled a five and a two. So that's not a bad roll. Now the Prussians, they roll three dice. They take the lower two, they've got a three and a two. Now they have two supports. They have one to the rear and one to the flank. They'll roll for the column on their left, see what that gives them. Gives them a four. That's healthy. They'll keep with it. They'll keep that. Um, the French they have three. Uh, they have two supports as well. One to the the left and one to the rear. So they'll roll their two and see what that gives them. A six. All right. They're probably going to sit on that now. The French they have one more roll left. Um, oh, sorry, the Prussians have one more roll left for the uh, battalion to the to the rear. So they'll roll that. Oh, um, they've rolled a one. Now, the Prussian battery does have the brigade commander attached to them with glory. Now that elevates, uh, that promotes the troop quality. Now that battery is lying, so that will promote them to veteran. Now, at the same time, the French have their brigade commander attached and they are recruits, so they'll be promoted to line. However, um, that doesn't help at all but the promotion by the Prussian does because that means that they will be classed as veterans against lower grade troops. So they get another re-roll. So they're going to take the one and they're going to re-roll it again, hoping to get something better. And they do, they get a six. Okay, so now the difference is a, a, a total of uh, 11 to 10 in favor of the French. Now, there are no other re-rolls available. So that's it. So, it's a victory by one or two. So, the infantry will combat with alarm and the defender will go unformed. Okay, so that battery is going to go unformed and the uh, Prussian, uh, the French will close in and fight with alarm. Now, they get the alarm bonus because they are French columns. If they were French lines, they wouldn't get the alarm because uh, 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 French troops get alarm only if they're in the column. And linear ar uh, armies only get alarm if they're in line. There's some slight adjustments and, and differences, but that's the, the gist of it. Okay. Okay, so now we have this charge to uh, charge procedure resolve. Again, this is an assault on a garrison. A single battalion coming forward. The garrison uh, is unformed. So normally instead of firing, so normally it would fire with five. Because it's unformed, it lo loses the dice, so it'll roll with four. One single hit, no casualties. So that means these guys now just charge in. There is no charge procedure to go through when you are doing um, an assault on a BUA. Okay. <clears throat> Let's not lose sight of the fact, however, that the, uh, the side that has the initiative at the moment is the Russians and the Prussians, the Allies. Um, these guys, 
uh, are uh, not hesitant. So this Russian cavalry could charge, except for the annoying fact that no one is in range and they don't have a forwards order. Um, these guys, the reason why that, that uh, glory attachment was put there was because uh, they intended to charge, but they've gone hesitant. Now, because of that, the glory tasking is no longer with them. So um, they're just standing there hesitant, which is good, which is as good as it gets for the French. So the Russians, the Prussians, the Allies, they say, no, we had no charge declarations. Um, and like I said, we continue with the French. And so the French declare a charge with the uh, uh, lances on uh, these uh, hussars here. So these hussars will get support from these guys. Those lances will get support from the eclairs. They don't have glory because even though they had glory allocated, they failed their initial roll. So they were hesitant. The only reason they're not hesitant is because of the ride the line. So with that said, those red lances will charge within three inches of these chaps here. So this battery will fire in support. Now, as you can see, they're not within six inches. They're not, they're not a direct support. However, the rules are clear that if a charging unit becomes within arc of a unit that can provide fire support, then that unit can fire. So that Russian battery is gonna fire. It's gonna to have to share its hits across both regiments as they come forward, but all the same, um, that will be, uh, uh, that is a large battery firing. And uh, 15 inches is gonna put these guys within effective range. Um, are they in close range? Um, yes, they are. So they will be firing canister at those uh, those uh, French cavalry as they come. So in. it's two dice for the battery, standard five. So it's not an inferior battery; it's a standard battery firing, and they're going to get four casualty dice, two canister range, one. Uh, they're shooting at uh, troops in column formation, and another one because they're a large battery at canister range. So black are the, the CDs, red is the battery die. Okay, a bit better this time. Six and one. A six, the standard battery at six is going to be one plus a discipline test if it's canister. And then another one. So it's going to be one and one. So these guys will go from two to three. And the red lancers will go from three to one, uh, one to two. And they have to do a discipline test They are veterans. Oh, they're going to go unformed. Let's have a look. So as I go charging in, um, we look at the discipline test for for these chaps. Uh, veterans, five to three, they go unformed. All right, so. These chaps will go unformed as they go forward. So if we look at 12.5.1, multiple targets and discipline tests, if firing at two or more targets in a charge, the lead charge unit will always take any resulting discipline test if it suffered any casualties. If the charge unit suffered no casualties, the supporting unit would take the discipline test. So now we will do the charge procedure here. The Dutch Lancers, they'll be rolling three dice because they are unformed. So three dice taking the lower two. They do have a reroll, however, because they have uh, these chaps in support. Um, uh, the uh, Austrians will also have a reroll, however, because they have within six inches uh, another regiment of uh, Hazars. So we'll roll the two dice for the Austrians first. Uh, they've got a five and a two, which is not too shabby. That's pretty good. The red lancers, a one and a three, because they can't, they take the lower of the two. Now, they do have a support in the form of these guys here, so they will re-roll that now. 
and they've got a six. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, um, obviously the um, Austrians will take their re-roll. So it's eight to nine at this point. Are there any other re-rolls? No, there's no other re-rolls. Uh, both are battle cavalry. Um, so there's no other, no, nothing else to add there. So as a consequence, the French have won nine to eight. So it's a one to two. Uh, cavalry versus cavalry, close to combat. Line versus column, uh, combat with Alain. Now, I just want to reiterate that in a situation where you have a, a two to one uh, result uh, in the charge, cavalry versus cavalry, close to combat, line versus column, combat with a land, that line versus column only is, is only applicable if the charger that initiated the combat is in line formation. So that's all the charge uh, procedure can, uh, taken care of. So now we're going to move on to movement. So with the charge resolution taken care of, what we do now is we move on to movement. Prussians have the initiative. We'll do Prussian tactical movement, French tactical movement, uh, any reserve movement from either side. Then we'll do shooting and then we'll uh, go straight into the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, I'm just going to do all that and I'll just give you a back brief uh, once we're there. So we've conducted all the movement and you can see what's uh, trans. Uh, transpired. The Russian cavalry has come up. Um, the, the French have advanced aggressively in the centre as well. The Dragoons came up, caused the uh, Prussian skirmishers to go unformed and uh, withdraw away. Uh, fortunately for the Prussians, they didn't take a casualty. And the uh, French have pushed on the flank over here. There was some uh, exchange of fire, but no casualties to speak of. So now we're going to go straight into the melee phase or combat and we'll resolve them. We'll, we'll resolve the fight for the built up area first. So we'll look at the French first. They're a pretty good order. They've got five dice, but they are attacking a BUA in the first turn. So they're going to go down to four. The Prussians for their part, five dice. They are veterans and they do have glory as well. So uh, they get one uh, CD for the glory posting. Um, and they also get another one for elite or veterans versus lower grades. So that takes them up to six, but they are unformed. So if they're unformed, they'll lose one. So that takes them down to five. So it's gonna be four versus five. Bit rash for the, for the French charging in, but they are the young guard, so let's not get uh, be too surprised. So, the Prussians are the white dice. Hitting on four, fives, and sixes. Well, um, the young guard have done it again. One, two, three, four hits. Uh, and the garrison have inflicted three. So the young guard have won by one. So we look at the infantry versus garrison line. If they win by win, uh, win, win by win, they win by win. If they win by one in the first round, both sides go unformed and they fight on. So in a situation like this, what happens is both players uh, place a, a D6 down and hide the, uh, what, they've, uh, what they've placed. If they put down a one, it means they're gonna withdraw. The, the, the unit immediately conducts a withdrawal move uh, and the opponent takes the, the ground. There's no, there's no combat um, conducted. Um, a fighting withdrawal. The original unit fights a second round whilst conducting a fighting withdrawal. You can see all this on page 89. But what we're going to do here is we're going to stand and reinforce. These chaps here are going to, they've got two options. They can get reinforcement from this unit here from their brigade because they're within support range, three inches. And this unit here, it's in a neighboring BUA uh, and it could also uh, pitch in. Uh, this unit can get support from the battalion that is at the rear of the BUA. That's positioned there specifically for that reason. So both units are going to pitch in with the battalion. But before we do that, we need to add the casualties that occurred during that initial round of combat. So these guys are gonna pick up um, three casualties. So that takes them to four. 
Um, the Prussians, they suffered four casualties. They're already on three, so that will take them to seven, which means they will be fighting as a worn battalion. So we calculate now the dice for, for, for both sides and all battalions involved. Uh, we work out there uh, how many CDs they had individually. They go into a pool and away we go. Now, um, should be noted that this unit, um, the initial French unit that charged in, they'll be classed as unformed now because they're involved in a melee. Um, okay, so these guys, they now start off with five uh, dice as per usual. Um, they are fighting in a uh, village, but because it's now not the first round, it's assumed that they don't get, get any, uh, the defenders don't get any benefit from being in the village anymore. It's all jumbled up and they're all in amongst the little buildings and uh, having at each other. So there's no negative modifier for uh, fighting in the BUA. Um, so they do lose, however, one dice because they're unformed. So that battalion is uh, has four dice. Uh, it's sister battalion going in with it. Uh, they have five dice. So that will give them a grand total of nine. As for the Prussians, they start off with five. Um, they are veterans, so they'll go up to six, but they're unformed and they're worn, so they're back down to four. They do get another five for their sister battalion pitching in to, their, to help them. So we now have a grand total of um, nine per side. Now, the glory tasking. Now, the course of the glory tasking, that, that, can, that is in play for all rounds of combat. So the, the uh, Prussians will pick up another one for that. So they now have 10 dice to 9. That said, though, because he is now fighting in a second round of combat, regardless of the outcome, there is a risk to general uh, involved. So when this combat is all concluded, uh, we'll have to see if uh, the, uh, the general is harmed. Uh, right. So now we'll roll the dice and uh, see what happens. So we'll roll the Prussian dice first. They're black and white. Four, fives, and sixes are hits. So there's a hit there, a hit there. So they've got a 50-50 result, which is not too not unsurprising, considering each dice has a 50-50 chance. So five hits. Now the French. They're red dice. One, two, three, four, five. It's another drawn result. So it's five casualties each because it's a drawn result in the second round that attackers withdrawn. So the defenders have held grimly on. However, now we have to roll to see what happens uh, with the general. Risk to general, if he, if he rolls a one, then the general has uh, obviously been uh, knocked over and the brigade will falter. Three, they're okay. So we now allocate the casualties across the, in, the units that are involved in the combat and then we will simply move the French back uh, to withdraw. Let's now move on to the other charges and resolve them. Okay, so when you um, have two units involved in a, a fight for a, a garrison, uh, at the end of it, the defender uh, and the winner chooses which units will remain in the garrison. Obviously, the Prussians have decided to uh, use this battalion here that came to the assistance. They have two casualties. They're, they're unformed. The original defenders have been uh, withdrawn. Uh, it's not a withdrawal move. They're simply placed at the rear of the garrison or the, the built-up area, uh, they're unformed also. Uh, they would be in contact with the uh, BUA, and they've got their 10 ca casualties. For the French, they've withdrawn uh, 18 inches straight back. Both battalions are unformed. The original assaulters, they have seven casualties, and the troops that reinforce, they have two. So, uh, yes, uh, fighting in a built-up area can be brutal. So let's go on and see how uh, how uh, tough these Prussian gunners are now and resolve this combat. Okay, so let's resolve this one here. We'll look at the Prussian battery first. Because it's an artillery unit, it starts with only three dice, uh, not five. So three dice for uh, artillery. Um, they do have glory because the boss is there. 
So that gives them another one. And they do have, um, uh, they, they are classed as veterans fighting a lower grade because the glory promotes them. So that gets, that gets them another one. So they're up to five dice. However, um, uh, they are unformed and they do have six ca over six casualties. So that takes two away. So they're back to just three dice. So let's roll their three dice and see what the result is for the battery. Okay, so out of three dice, they've inflicted two hits on the French coming in. The Frenchmen, for their part, they have uh, going for them. They are a, uh, they've got five dice because they're an infantry unit. They are combating with Alan, so because of the charge result, uh, so that gives them another one. They do have their uh, brigade commander attached, so that's glory, so that's another one. Um, and other than that, that's it. So they've got a grand total of seven dice. So let's roll the dice and see what the gunners get. Uh, sorry, the French infantry get. One, two, three. They've got three hits as well. Again, another drawn result. Now what's interesting here, however, is um, the three hits from the... French on the battery takes it up to 12, which is the dispersal point for this battery. So this battery is wiped out. So this is what they class as a Pyrrhic victory. So in the case of a Pyrrhic victory, the loser uh, converts the result to winning. So they take the ground and hold it unformed. Um, and obviously this unit is destroyed. Now, because the unit disperses, there is a risk to the general. So now we must roll to see if he is um, knocked over. So we'll roll that risk to general now. Five, he's fine. Okay. Now, regardless of the fact that the brigade commander uh, did survive, uh, the fact that a unit has been uh, destroyed uh, because the dispersal um, has happened, this brigade is now faltering. Okay, let's just move on to our last combat to resolve, which is the cavalry battle on the right, the Prussian-Russian right flank. Okay, so both sides start with five combat dice. The Red Lancers start off with five, but they lose one because they're unformed, but they gain one back because they are uh, elite and veterans versus a lower grade. So they're on five dice. So the Hazars, they've got, um, they start with five and, and there's no other red, no other pluses or minuses or anything like that. So the Hazars have five dice. So it's five versus five, hitting on four plus. The French will be the red dice. Okay, so the result there is one hit, one casualty each. That's a draw and so we get a fight on result. And furthermore, both sides are now unformed. So just like in the other combats that we've looked at, we now have, in the second round, we have this situation where uh, you secretly select, using a die, whether or not you'll uh, withdraw, conduct the fighting withdrawal, or stand and reinforce. Now for the Austrians, they're in a predicament. Because they're hesitant, they can't reinforce. So standing and reinforcing is not an option for them but a fighting withdrawal is. So they will do a fighting withdrawal. Now the French, they went with uh, stand and reinforce. Now, if the enemy is conducting a fighting with withdrawal, um, the French can continue to fight, but not with both units. So what the French will do is they will pull this unit out and send this one back in. These ones will come in and then we fight the, the, the round again. For the Austrians, however, they're now uh, unformed due to the uh, previous Malay. Whereas these Lancers, these Eclair Scouts, they will be formed. So I think it's also important, I'll just reiterate here, because I, I don't recall if I, I said it earlier, but when you do get a fight on result, a second round of combat will only occur when the combatants are cavalry units or when the combat is when the, uh, pertains to a village or a strong point. Um, furthermore, um, this whole uh, 
because the the Austrians are doing a fighting withdrawal, um, uh, only one of the uh, French units are, are going to fight them. Because as they as the French as the Austrians pull out of the fight, um, that creates a situation where an, a another French unit can uh, pitch in after them. That's why it's only one unit. Um, so in this kind of scenario, imagine if you will, uh, the Austrians decide to give ground uh, begrudgingly, and as they pull away, the the, uh, the Red Lancers, uh, their commanding officer and their uh, their 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 commanders. They, they basically say, um, you know, hold, hold, uh, whereas the guard scouts, the eclairs, they come dashing forward and, and basically uh, insinuate, we will continue the pursuit, and they go in after the hussars, uh, hence why you have this one-on-one -on -one situation. So now what we have is the uh, guard scouts coming in. They're classed as line five. Uh, they get uh, five dice. Um these chaps here, five dice, but they're unformed, so they lose one. So they're down to four. So, red for the French. Okay, they've inflicted one hit, and the French have inflicted three. So they've won by two. Um, the result of a victory by two, cavalry versus cavalry, take the ground, loser, with, uh, loser retreats. So another three hits on them. These fellas here um, suffered one hit. So that takes them up to four casualties. And so now um, these uh, guys will retreat and these chaps will take the ground. Uh, cavalry retreat, they take no extra casualties uh, on, what, on top of what they already have and they will go back uh, 24 inches, which will bring them pretty much back to the very edge of the game. I think another important takeaway from this uh, particular scenario is that cavalry, generally speaking, uh, when they're fighting, the best formation for them to fight in is in uh, lines. Uh, columns are more manoeuvrable uh, and they move uh, a, a greater distance. Um, but in combat, line is the, the formation to be in. Also, if you're cavalry in column, you're a, a, a juicier target for artillery. Um, the only real benefit is if you go into a second round of combat uh, if you're a large cavalry unit. Um, okay, um, we'll wrap it up there. Um, there's a lot that we ha there's a, a lot of things that we have not covered um, in this uh, boot camp. Uh, it, it 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 wasn't going to be exclu um, uh, all inclusive of every kind of thing that can happen uh, in a GDA game, uh, but I think it's a good start. I, I will um, in, in due course uh, make some more videos about. Uh, specific parts of the rules but for this boot camp I think we'll wrap it up this particular video has gone longer than I hoped it would but I thought it was better to continue on with it with the fifth turn given uh, so much was happening in that turn okay let's wrap it up so that concludes our GDA uh, version 2 boot camp uh, we've co covered a hell of a lot if I have made any mistakes um, I apologize like I said, it's a solo effort, uh, no independent check. I try to check uh, and confirm everything with the author if I have any doubts in regards to anything, but a, carefully, a careful reading of the rules will pay dividend. They're not complex rules at, by any stretch of the imagination, um, but uh, there, there, there are some aspects that are a little bit involved and you really need to uh, um, have a close look at the rules. Thank you to Battlefield Accessories for sponsoring this series of videos. I remind you, um, if you want a set of these oh so flash uh, deployment markers, simply when you decide to purchase a set of the fantastic General Army 2 uh, game markers, simply pop uh, a set of these deployment markers into your cart as well, sneaky sneaky, and uh, use the promo code Check uh, CYL for check your leader. Don't write check your leader, just letter C, uh, letter C, the letter Y, the letter L, and um, you will get these free. Uh, and free stuff's good. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe. If you've got any comments, let me know, good, bad, or indifferent. If you think I've made a mistake, I'm also interested in hearing that. Uh, and uh, uh, let us know either through the various forums, or 
uh, in the comments of this video. Until I see you on the next one, you have a quite.